Hi, I'm uh, Dr. Pradeep Pracharla, Professor of Marketing at Mahindra University School of Management. Within the broad area of marketing, my areas of specialty are uh, digital transformation, digital marketing and digital commerce. Now, let me impress upon you the fact that this is still a draft set and it is still not a law. Lot has to be discussed and finalized before it can be converted into a law. Now, what is the controversy? The trader bodies, the small traders and the bodies that represent them have been complaining for quite some time that e-commerce companies have certain undue advantages given their size, given their funding and so on and so forth. And because of that, the small traders in this country are unable to compete with these e-commerce companies and that's a problem. The other side of the controversy is directly from the e-commerce companies. These are companies like Amazon, Flipkart, Snapdeal and so on and so forth. What they are saying is the rules are too onerous they don't make any sense and more importantly they will have an impact on how these companies do business to a point where these companies say that they may have to fundamentally change their business models in the long run what they claim is that it will also have an impact on the growth of the e-commerce industry including investments from abroad and that is not good for the economy as a whole that i would say is the biggest controversy There are both good and bad. I see two very strong good things in the proposed set of rules and many which are either ambiguous or do not really make too much sense. Let me start with the good ones. For example, one of the rules in the draft set suggests that e-commerce companies have to be very transparent about their activities. For example, let's say a product is listed on an e-commerce website, then the company has to make sure that every single detail about the product, including the point of origin, the pricing, the return policies, and you know all this associated set of rules have to be clearly mentioned in the uh, website so that the consumer has all the good information before the consumer takes a decision whether to buy the product or not. I think that's a fantastic thing because all said and done, there are still a lot of unscrupulous players in the online domain which tend to fool the customers with ambiguous information. The second I think is good is the government is now proposing that every e-commerce company should have a full-time grievance officer. The job of the grievance officer is to make sure that the company has all the associated processes to deal with consumer complaints. And they have also set a very specific time frame, if I'm not mistaken, somewhere in the 48 hour window from the point a consumer complains, the Department of Grievances has to make sure that the complaint is acted upon. I think these are really good things in the proposed law. The bad slash the ambiguous ones, which in fact were, I would say, the biggest uh, uh, parts of the law as well. One is relating to what is called as flash sales. Now, what are flash sales? The proposed law says that flash sale is anything that is unplanned and a product or a set of products are sold at a huge discount compared to the actual MRP. There are two problems with this. One is the definition of flash sales is not very clear in the proposed set of rules. The second is flash sales are done not only by e-commerce players, even offline uh, companies do that, offline retail companies like your Reliance Trends or you know, uh, Big Basket or Big Bazaar. Many of them do festival sales, uh, festival sales, many of them do heavily discounted sales because they either want to get rid of inventory or you know, get the customers into their store so that they can sell more uh, you know, different types of products to them. So from this perspective, I think this is a very ambiguous rule that every uh, company is complaining about. The second, which falls into the gray area, is the proposed law tries to curb 
what are called as related party transactions. Now, what are related party transactions? Any company which is associated with the main e-commerce company, wherein there is at least a 10% stake or shares common directors, is prohibited from doing a large uh, you know, percentage of the business on the e-commerce website. Now, there are two problems here. One is related party transactions are pretty common. So I don't see a reason as to why that should be banned because companies have uh, collaborations with a lot of different brands, right? The second is again, it doesn't mean that this applies only to let's say a Flipkart or an Amazon. For example, Starbucks is technically a partner for Tata's. And in that sense, Starbucks becomes a related party to Tata's. So the rules will prohibit Starbucks from you know, selling any products on the Tata e-commerce website. And Tata's are coming up with you know, uh, large e-commerce plans. The same thing applies to all the domestic companies as well. So this is, I would say, a very ambiguous rule. It has to be tightened and that will probably solve the complaint of the industry players. Primary motivation is consumer protection, given that this has come from the Department of Consumer Affairs. And as I said earlier, many of the proposed rules in the, uh, the draft set are oriented towards consumer welfare. So that's a good thing and that's a good motivation. The, depending on you know, which angle you take, the other motivation is, I would say, political. Given that the current government is closely aligned with the small trader bodies, the small traders have been complaining about e-commerce companies for quite some time. This, I would say, is a nod from the government side or an acknowledgement from the government side towards the small trader body saying, hey, you know what? We understand your cons uh, concerns. We understand the problems that you're facing because of these e-commerce players. And we would at least like to go in the step of solving some of these problems. Digital commerce is still 5% of the overall commerce in our country. So for every, let's say, 100 rupees of products that, is, uh, that are sold uh, in the country, only 5 rupees of that actually happens on digital channels. The rest, 90 to 95% of those sales still happen offline in offline stores. So e-commerce is still not at a level where it is completely cannibalizing offline sales or offline uh, vendors. So from that angle, I would say that's really not a problem. At the same time, yes, the trend is towards more and more e-commerce, more and more digital sales. And these rules will probably strengthen that aspect so that when the time comes, when let's say there is an equal balance between digital and non-digital uh, commerce, then these rules will probably do what is called as a level playing field. <laughs> yeah, that's a... That's a speculation. Uh, the interesting thing that happened once the, uh, the, uh, the rules were uh, uh, let out in June is that in addition to complaints from the private players like you know, uh, e-commerce companies like Flipkart, Amazon, even the US government also complained about this because they feel that this is a backdoor way to impose uh, uh, duties on uh, foreign companies like Flipkart. Technically, Flipkart is now owned by an American company. Other ministries, in the current government have also complained. The Ministry of Finance says that this is an overreach because it has an impact on the investment climate. It has an impact on the ease of doing business, which is a big deal for the Ministry of Finance. And in the long run, it has an impact on FDI, on taxes, on job creation, and so on and so forth. The Ministry of Corporate Law has also complained, saying that this is an overreach and some of the rules proposed in this draft set kind of impinge upon the right of the corporate law ministry to take action on these companies based on anti-competitive practices. So if you think about it, the way the rules have been proposed so far do impinge upon the areas of work of different other ministries. And they have explicitly uh, raised concerns about this law, including the Niti Aayog, by the way. At the same time, the minister who is in charge of this department is saying that there is no going back. I would say this kind of disagreement is good because what that will lead to is a healthy discussion wherein things will be thrashed out among different ministries and it will come, you know, it will eventually lead to a sane law. What will happen? I would say 
very soon the government will come up with a new set of rules. The bottom line of the story is it's not a law that should go forward in the current form. Thank you.